Hi folks, I'm Nathan Two Guys Ride. Today, Rob and I are out here in beautiful Chaska, Minnesota. We're at the Let Freedom Drive Car Show. All right, and we're here with Randy, and Randy, what do we have behind us here? We've got a 1970 Jeep, Jeepster Commando from the Kaiser era. I'll tell you what, you know, we've been talking about this for a while uh, this afternoon, and uh, first of all, we just really appreciate you having all this background knowledge on your vehicle. So let's, let, let's, uh, let's start with how did you get into a, a Jeep? Well, I uh, remember when I was young and my dad was going out to buy our first 1970 Jeep Wagoneer for the family. Mm -hmm. And as we went to the different uh, showrooms, I would see these commandos on the showroom floors. And I was enamored with them, the way they looked and the, uh, the design and so forth. They just looked cool. And I would tell my dad, that is a cool vehicle. And he would look at me and say, impractical. <laughs> because as you'll notice, the back seat doesn't have a lot of leg room. No. And with six people in the family, there was no room no, in this no. car. Oh, you'd have them on top of the roof. Yeah, for sure. Jeez. But it was a cool vehicle. Okay, so you had these memories from childhood. So what enabled you to, 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 to finally, because you've owned this since 20... 2020. Yep, 2020. 2020. Yep. So I picked it up in Tennessee in 2020. Uh, I had, uh, in, when I was back in high school, some few decades ago, yeah. I was trained as an auto mechanic. Okay. And uh, I went on to take uh, auto mechanics at Dunwoody Industrial in Minneapolis. Okay. And so I was a certified auto technician. But then I went into business for 40 years okay. and kind of left that behind. And so as I retired, this was kind of my return to my roots. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, as you'll see, folks, I mean, he's done just an outstanding job. So let's start um, right, you know, right here at the front because there are some cool things. You know, like we noticed, you know, okay, it's got the seven slats. Yep. So it's got the Jeep slats. We were noticing the emblem because that's just, I, I just love those. They're, they're yep. you know, there's so much work put into them as compared to today. Yep. Um, but then we got to talking about that whole front end. So yeah. tell us how this whole front end, came to be. So let's back up just a little bit even from there. So in 1966, Kaiser Corporation, who owned Jeep at the time, was facing competition from two other manufacturers. International had introduced the Scout in 1961, and that was eating into the CJ5 market, or they, what they called the Jeep Universal market okay. in those days. And then in 1966, Ford was coming out with the Bronco. And so Jeep needed to do something to deal with that, to create a car-like sport utility vehicle, SUV, v. sport UV yeah. utility vehicle. So this was kind of one of those early sport utility vehicles. So to save money, they went to their um, scrap bins basically mm -hmm. and said, well, what have we got? What can we start with? And so they started with a CJ6 frame, which was a little longer than a CJ5, so it would give a better ride. Okay. Still on uh, leaf springs on all fours, so it's not not a cushy one like you would have today, right. but a uh, uh, longer uh, wheelbase. It's a 101-inch wheelbase. And then they went uh, to the body parts. The tub is actually somewhat new. It's designed after the uh, late 1940s to early 1950s Jeepster that came out right after the war. Okay. It was a two-wheel drive um, cabriolet, or not cabriolet, it was a... Uh, a roadster kind of uh, uh, vehicle, a Phaeton uh, roadster, okay. that they sold mostly to uh, veterans and so forth to have a sporty vehicle. And so they had the design from that that they kind of updated. But then on the front end, uh, as we were kind of noticing earlier, and I'll pop the hood here to show you, um, the grill was actually taken from a CJ5 grill okay. that got modified with these winglets, there we go, to be able to put the turn signals up high on the be on the right and left side instead of down low to create a wider stance on the grill that would be more car like and then as you look at the fenders the tops of the fenders you see that body line yep. also from the cj5 series of cj6 and so forth um, so they're literally they were using existing parts to kind of put together an all-new car okay so now on the, well we have this up the blinkers as well yep would have been down lower, down right lower. below the headlights. And so instead of stamping them out down below, they moved them up to the sides to give that wider look, more car-like look. Okay. Now, there's a. The, the, <laughs> we were talking about the engine itself. Ah. <laughs> there, there's a short history here, that, if you can summarize it, but it's quite funny. 
Okay, so in 1960, 61, uh, Kaiser Corporation was looking for an upgrade engine from their standard four-cylinder engines that they were using in the CJ5s. So they went to General Motors and they bought the license and machining for what was called the 225 V6 that had been designed by Buick. Okay. Um, it is called also the Dauntless V6 and the Oddfire V6. An Oddfire because it started out life as a V8, a 90-degree VV8, and it became a six-cylinder by lopping off two cylinders from okay. the casting. With 90 degrees, it was hard to have a 60-degree firing sequence, so they came up with a 90-30, 90-30, 90-30 firing sequence, okay. hence the odd fire, a little bit like a Harley-Davidson. Right. Oh, interesting. <laughs> okay. So uh, that was a shorter length engine and fit nicely into the space that a four-cylinder would fit in, okay. so they didn't have to modify the rest of the vehicle if someone wanted an upgraded engine. Right, and they were looking to do it cheaply. Right. Okay. And so when the Jeepster came out, uh, the Jeepster Commando came out in 66, they offered the base engine was the four-cylinder 134 or the uh, upgrade engine, the V6 225. Oh, man. It's, it's, it's fun to just know all those little little uh, yeah. gold nuggets behind uh, what, what you're actually looking at. Little twist. Yeah. Now, we also talked about the fact that this, you know, we're talking about this front end and how extended it is. And we were saying, well, is there a purpose for that? And, of course, there is. Yeah. And so with the, uh, the design of this vehicle having leaf springs on all fours, the frame extends in front of the wheels quite a distance. So they had to extend where they put the bumper on, and then they left this rock shield, they call it, right uh, between the grill and the uh, the bumper to cover up where the frame extends. There is also right underneath that space the uh, uh, steering knuckle, or excuse me, steering gear that uh, drives the uh, steering for the front wheels. That's forward of the axle, so all of that's kind of covered here. Personally, I like it because it creates a love seat for when I'm at car shows. I have a place to sit you down. Have a place to sit down. You can stand <laughs> it. You can whatever. That's like what same would be like 16 mil. Yeah. <laughs> it's metal, right? Yeah, 16 gauge steel. Which is what all this is. Yes, the body is all the same level of steel or same thickness of steel as modern car frames are made out of. <laughs> That's a little discouraging. Don't <laughs> let's not delve into that. Okay. Well made though. Well, and sturdy made. If yep. you ever run into something, whatever you run into is gonna know. Yes. Or let's say they run into you. You bet. Okay. So uh, the the rims. Yep. Are they original to a, a, a Jeepster or are they uh, different? different but similar looking. So these particular rims on this particular vehicle are actually Ford rims. They come off of a, I think like an F100, F150. Um, the, interestingly enough, you'll notice on the front wheels, the hole in the center is the four inch diameter that fits the, uh, the uh, drive axle hub on the rear. They're much narrower than that, so I can't swap these front to rear. But they look nice, and they look similar to the wagon wheels that were actually sold on the on, uh, Jeepster okay. in its time. Yes. And now, I mean, when this was built, I mean, literally as they were on the assembly line, they would reach back, pick a part, and put it on. So there were certain parts in the car where you actually had to say, well, do you have a Ford one? or a Chevy one, or is it a Jeep one? What is it, right? Yeah. So the fact that the rims are Ford just goes along with the rest of the <laughs> it fits theme. fits right in, you bet. All right, so um, you you actually had to restore a lot of this. You, What was it like when you got it? So this vehicle uh, I found in Tennessee uh, in uh, February of 2020. It had been uh, uh, primed and prepared for a restoration project, but the person doing that had died five years prior, and he had been working on it 10 years prior to that. So oh, for 15 boy. years, it had been sitting in primer outdoors. So outdoors? Outdoors, yeah. And the, uh, the, what I found out as I was trying to move it onto a trailer is three of the four wheels were locked up solid because they were rusted shoes to right. drums, which was really a they mess. self-welded. Yeah, self-welded. Uh, all the exterior trim elements and, and so forth were gone. Uh, I somewhat suspect that uh, someone was parting the vehicle out because wiring harnesses had been cut and uh, oh. uh, light fixtures were gone and sure. that type well, of thing. I saw this shoe here. I got this. Yeah. Yeah. So it uh, and the vent windows were gone. Those are kind of uh, a little bit on the rare side. Uh, but all things that I was able to track down and uh, put together. Now, talking real quickly about logos and stuff. Sure. So here, you know, explain this briefly because it's it's um, it's a Jeep. Yep. Jeepster. 
Commander. So explain the hierarchy yeah, of those. Commando, by the Commando. way. Commando. Thank you. <laughs> I was reading it without my glasses. That's okay. Uh, and there's a reason for my re uh, response. So Jeep is the manufacturer. Uh, Jeepster is a line of vehicles, which was available in uh, the Commando series, which had wagon, pickup, and roadster. Okay. Uh, roadster meaning no roof. It just is a, 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 a an open car kind of thing. Um, and then Jeepster, without Commando on it, was a special convertible vehicle, power roof, with uh, extra trim on it and so forth, and a two-tone paint job that was really kind of an upscale, classier vehicle in that way, okay. but still the same basic body uh, okay. and uh, drivetrain. All right, well, hence all the differences. Now, it's interesting to note you pointed this out, but uh, these are two different pieces. Yes. But it's got an extra hole back here. Why? Well, okay, so like with a lot of things that were done with these Jeeps, they were the parts were designed to be used in many different ways. Okay. And over the years, uh, depending on like this particular vehicle has a uh, reflector on the uh, the front end of the hood, um, you needed to have a certain length of uh, logo. So the Jeepster and the Commando logo fit together in two different lengths. Okay. Uh, this is actually on its longest stretch, and then a shorter version is just moving the Commando piece back Back one oh, notch. Oh, second E. Right. Okay. Yeah. On the Jeep. Okay. Yeah. Jeepster. So versatility, uh, uh, saving money. I love, I, I love that history. Yeah. Fewer parts um, in the bin. Explain to us a little bit on the windshield because you've adjusted those. Um, oh, the, the windshield wipers, windshield wipers yeah. yeah. So when I bought it, the uh, wiper arms were straight uh, when I bought those and, and right brought them in. The, yeah, so brand new wiper okay. arms. And I, when you went to park, they would only park, you know, halfway up on the window because they, the angle uh, would hit the rubber uh, right. at an earlier point. And so then I started reflecting, well, wait a minute, on modern uh, windshield wipers, there's a certain bend towards the end. I wonder what that does. And so I took out my torch and heated it up and bent it a little bit and went, oh. Oh, now they lay down flatter and they wipe a wider sweep on the window. <laughs> I like and so, that. yeah, so it's just taking advantage of newer technology with older yeah. technology. Now, not every part on the car is original or, or would have been original. The mirrors are newer. so yeah I, I upgraded the mirrors because I'm an old guy and I like to be able to see what's behind me so uh, these are actually Wrangler mirrors okay uh, and this I, the original would have had one one opera sized round window around uh, mirror just outside the driver's uh, window over there safer yeah to go this way. yeah this gives me a lot more view okay so um, on the interior did you modify anything? So on the uh, the standard dashboard is pretty much there. Uh, the previous owner had put a uh, cheap Sparkomatic uh, radio in the dash, and it hacksawed out the hole to fit it. You can oh. see it's a little bit larger oh, than the radio I put in there. Oh, I see just yeah. unless you point it out. Yeah, and so I've got a factory correct AM radio in there, uh, but uh, if you if you kind of pay attention to radio stations these days, there's not a lot available on the AM band. Right. So well, uh, especially not with a, an antenna, right? Yeah. Now you got HD AM. Yeah. Which is a little a little better, but yeah. Yep, it's shorter wave. So. Yeah, so I've also uh, I've done a little bit of an upgrade. Most people don't even see it, but there's an AM, FM stereo radio with weather band mounted in the ceiling <laughs> right above you. And so I, uh, at my local tractor supply, they had these radios oh, that yeah. are actually yeah, yeah, for yeah. combine uh, yeah. cabs. And uh, so yep. I bought that and mounted it from the ceiling to give me a modern oh, entertainment oh, 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 capability. Oh, there we go. Yeah. All right, and obviously, you've had, have you added the three gauges that are down by the steering wheel, or were those? No, those were not standard. So I added those because, uh, honestly, with a 53-year-old engine, I wanted to know what the yeah, actual temperature correct. was, and I also wanted to know oil pressure and voltage. So uh, I added those in uh, last year. Now, the seats, you said, when you found them were three-quarters of the way waterlogged. Right, yeah, the uh, seats that were with the vehicle when I picked it up were actually boat seats. They were oh. wood-framed and uh, solid foam around wood, and they were waterlogged and moldy, so those went right into the dumpster. Okay. These are actually Smittybilt brand seats that are uh, replicas, replicas. Of, okay. of the original stuff. But this is how, how it would have looked. It would have been two separate seats, would yep. have been a small bench Yep, in, in the, the back. back. Yeah. Okay. Let's, With three let's inches talk. of knee room. <laughs> yeah, it's really tiny, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. All right, so let's talk about the uh, the roof for a minute. Sure. So what color is this? Oh, I cheated on the color on here. So I used the Ford Wimbledon white because it's more of a creamy white and with the uh, avocado mist metallic that the regular car is here, it just seemed to go better than what a polar or uh, uh, glacier white I think is Which what is what it would have had. Would have been, yeah. Original. Okay. Yeah. Um, and talk about the paint on the car as yeah. well. This is, I mean, the same color combination that I mean, yes, that you could have gotten. It's a factory option with yeah. 
but it's got a little difference in the formula. What's the yeah? Difference? So when I went to have the paint mixed for the body, uh, I gave him the code, the 431 code, and uh, he came back and he said, "I'm going to give you a variation." And the variation that he did was 50% of the metallic content. And I blew them both onto test cards, dried them, uh, uh, clear coated them, and then dried them, and then held it up to the light. And I went, "Yes, I like the variation." The 50% less metallic meant the color came through a little more richly. Oh, I, I, and it looks stunning. I mean, that's just, that looks great. Okay, let's walk around the back here for a minute. Um, let's see, this would have been, it is four wheel drive. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, and was this with the vehicle or do you actually found that? So, no, logo? yeah, I actually had to source that because it was okay. missing. Um, so the, it would have had not only the Jeep logo down there, but it would have had a uh, chrome four wheel drive emblem as well. Okay. And this sticker is actually a Willys uh, generation sticker, this being a Kaiser generation vehicle. But I thought it just looked good and it was a lot less expensive yes. and it also doesn't rust. <laughs> hey, there so you go. I thought it'd be a good solution. Yes, it is. So you got, uh, you, you did replacement tail lights, but they're the original colors and shape yep. and, and yep. divided the way the originals would have I been. took one shortcut on the tail lights. Uh, the factory would have been a chrome frame around the outside. Okay. It had four holes that anchored it, but those were a hundred dollars a piece. To, to replace those. I thought, yeah, that's a place I can save some money. Yeah. And they, I think, look just fine without the chrome on them. They look great. Yeah, they do. Absolutely. Okay, let's uh, walk back around this side here. Okay, fuel door, this is still original. Yes. I mean, this is where it would have been, and yep. it's still the fuel totally. door. Totally, yep. It would have had reflectors on the side? Yes, yes, and okay. so I just put new reflectors in the same holes. The only thing I changed on the fuel system, I did put a plastic tank in it. Yeah. Um, the sure. original metal tank was uh, rusting at a really weird way. Yeah. Um, I was fighting, Those are touchy when yeah, you get into it. Drifts of that rust old. in the bottom of my carburetor. All right, now, um, on the doors, Yep. there's something quite interesting. Oh, the texture? If, if you look at it closely, <laughs> yeah. it's textured. So yeah. my first guess was it was a texture because this is all steel. It's all steel. So my guess was that, that the steel was stamped and then painted. Other people have said, no, it's a texture in the paint. So what is this? It's a steel texture that was stamped into it. Um, it makes it look like leather texture, but it's really funny. Um, it is. Yeah. I mean, it's very interesting. I've never seen anything yeah. like that. Yeah. This is a reference to the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh. Oops. Uh oh, no. There's, there, there's eight. You yeah. With a cup holder. Yeah. <laughs> I thought maybe it was a reference to the yeah. front grill. <laughs> Yeah, so there's there's no seven uh, characters there, but uh, I think it's mostly for strength to create a lower uh, vibration and rattle opportunity. Okay, now on this side of the roof, you can clearly see the lines that are grooved into the to the top, right? Sure. sure. So you said originally this came with a roof rack. Yes. Okay, and we'll talk about that in a second. Sure. But why did they? Was this just a design element, or was it structural? Yes. Uh, so design element because it looks good but mostly structural because when you take a flat piece of steel like that you get what we call oil canning effects and most of us have taken a cookie sheet when we were kids and we'd ripple them and make it sound like thunder yeah well imagine the thunder you get off a piece of steel the size of that yeah roof. yeah yeah and honestly actually uh, when i first started driving around with the roof on even with those ribs in there the age of that roof it makes a lot of noise so i've gone into the ribs on the inside and I've sprayed foam into between the okay. ribs and the steel to keep the steel from vibrating. Okay. Now, there were four holes or two oh. holes in yeah. each corner. Two holes in each corner for the roof rack. Okay. Yeah. So, so being being the ingenious guy that you are, tell us how you fix these. Well, it just occurred to me on the day that I was working on the roof that I needed to plug those holes, and so I went over to Home Depot, picked up a metal circuit box with the knockout plugs, yeah. and brought that with me to the uh, school where I was working on the truck, and knocked out all the knockout plugs and used each one as a plug behind the hole from the inside, and then welded from the top to do a. Um, uh, uh, what do they call it? It's uh, it's like a, a rivet weld that you do, okay. where you fill in the, the the area with weld and then just ground it flat. So on the outside, you can't really see where the holes were anymore, no. but on the inside, it looks like there's a coin stuck to the roof. <laughs> I, lo I love it. Yeah. Now, tell us a little bit about you know. So when you decided to do this, you decided to do your own work. Yep. You you had the the, the mechanical background, but not necessarily the body work, right? Yep. Yep. So how in the world? Did you go from kind of knowing only basics about body work 
having it at some level like this where well did the natural thing i went to school <laughs> all right in the state of minnesota where we live and where i was working on this there's a, a little known law in the book since 1978 that says if you're 62 or older you can take classes at any state higher ed institute for pennies on the dollar, basically. We'll right. just say that. Right. Um, so I enrolled at a local um, uh, tech school that is part of the Minnesota State College and University System as a senior audit student. And for roughly three to $500 per semester, I was able to take a full year of auto body classes and wow. use this as my project to demonstrate my skills while I was in the school. So Man. saved probably about 20 grand on my oh, paycheck. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's a really neat deal. Yeah. Wow. Okay, let's uh, let's come back up front here. We'll close the door. Well, you know, Randy, th wow. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. It's always fun for us to run across somebody who's not only super knowledgeable about their vehicle, but it's history and why things are the way they are. Uh, just amazing. Thank you for taking your time with us. You're most welcome, and thanks for asking. You bet. Take care. Thanks for watching.